I remember when I was trying to come up with a regular prayer life. This is going to sound like a detour, but it's not. Um, I didn't like sitting alone, didn't like praying. I did like apologetics. And so I remember I would spend that hour I had allotted myself every day to basically study you know, apologetics. And it was very exciting. And I kind of maybe mistook that excitement for the fact that I'm doing the right thing. And there's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. apologetics. It's a very noble thing to do. Of but of course, it's a different thing than praying. But I think in a more sort of insidious sense, people are replacing their prayer lives with ecclesial news sites because there is a sense of satisfaction we get from outrage. And I'm really concerned that many of us are doing that, that we're just refreshing whoever, and we're mistaking that for the Christian life. Excellent observation. Yeah, yeah. if you're going to respond uh, in a Christian way to the crisis in the church, you have to be a man or woman of prayer. And that means meditation on the scriptures, on the doctrine of the faith, and the lives of the saints. You know, take for inspiration. I read Magnificat every day, and they have a life of a saint on most days, usually among the, some obscure saints I've never heard of, but wonderful stories. But meditating on those will allow you precisely to see, well, the work of apologetics is supposed to be doing Christ's work. But if I'm not united to Christ in thought and intention through a prayerful union with him, I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes. That'll help calm people down also from the hurt of disappointment. Uh, because in the end, people like a lot of people have the expectation, if I do what's right, and God's going to smooth everything out, and the life of the church is going to inspire me at all moments. <laughs> doesn't work that way. Uh, you know, the last thing the other 11 apostles wanted is to have Judas running around doing what he did. He did it, you know. You know, think about that. He was stealing from the money bank, and they knew about it, and the Lord kept him there among the other apostles, and the Lord knows everything. You know, there's a mystery of evil in the life of the church that we have to be reconciled to, not in the sense that we agree with it, but that we understand it's operative and we have to, you know, pose it in a Christian way. All right. Here's an inflammatory question. Could uh, somebody justify Pope Francis not responding to the German cardinals by saying Christ didn't publicly rebuke Judas for much of their public ministry? And it's just the mystery of evil that we have to live with, uh, the wheat and the weeds. Well, Judas was stealing money. He wasn't teaching that Jesus' teachings were false, you know. I mean, that's the distinction to be made here. Um, no, the job of the Pope, is, as we read in the Scriptures, you turn, you will not, and now you will turn and confirm your brethren. So the primary job of the Pope is to confirm the brethren, meaning the other, the other apostles, their successors, but also all the people in the Church, in the doctrine of the faith. So when he fails to do that, um, he's not following the example of his Great predecessors, point. you know. Great point. And we see Christ rebuking the apostles when they do come into conflict with his doctrine, such as when yes. he calls Peter Satan. Or how about the Emmaus disciples? You know, slow of heart to understand what's in the scriptures. You know, he, he explained to them all the things leading up to him. The, the Emmaus disciples are another great meditation on how things go wrong in the life of the church. I mean, the holy women told them about the resurrection, <laughs> and they didn't believe him. Mm. And then they took this six-mile walk, I think it is, to, to Emmaus, <laughs> downcast as if nothing had happened. Wait a minute. Do you think after all these, you know, months and years following the Lord that the women are going to make up a story? And they couldn't hang around to find out if it was true. So this, this is what happened in the life of the church. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.